Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to look at capital cost allowance and this is going to be part one of a two video series. It's a little bit of a complicated concept. It's not something that you need any intimate awareness of at the LLQP or mutual funds licensing level. Uh, Canadian Securities course you don't really need this. This is really more of a tax and financial planning issue. Um, it is something that's good to be aware of. It has a lot of implications. However, I want to emphasize here, not tax advice as always. And this is absolutely a place where if you have questions, you have to deal with an accountant. There's a lot of potential different uh, complications that can arise here. So capital cost allowance is another word for depreciation. It's really the sort of fancy tax word for depreciation. Oops. And the basic way that this thing works, so you have a capital expenditure, so you buy some equipment of some sort, and this is not a deductible expense for the business, it's not immediately deductible. Instead, the cost of this essentially gets amortized from a tax perspective through the depreciation process. So let's say for the sake of argument that you go out and you buy some machinery for your business. You go buy a $100,000 machine. I don't care what it is. If you're in the printing business, let's say you go out and you buy a $100,000 collating machine. So you spend this money. It's not deductible for the business. This would be spent using your after-tax dollars. And this is true for most capital purchases, most capital acquisitions when you're buying something like equipment or vehicles or software. These are generally capital purchases, uh, buildings, and not deductible. Now, what we allow then to happen, we say, well, we understand that your collating machine, as an example, it doesn't really matter, is going to lose some of its value over time. It becomes obsolete, or it moves towards obsolescence, or it needs more and more servicing, or at some point down the road you're going to have to replace it. So this is where we would introduce a, let's say just for the sake of argument, an 8% capital cost allowance, or CCA. And that CCA, that set uh, in the income tax regulations, there's a huge variety of different CCAs and there's different CCAs for different types of equipment depending when they were purchased. So if you're looking at boats, for example, boats have different CCAs based on the size of the boat, on the nature of the boat, on what type of water the boat normally is used on um, and it's very complicated. You'll find the same thing for most uh, say farm equipment. There's a lot of different rates of depreciation. But 8% is a pretty common rate of depreciation. Probably two that people watching this video will be curious about is passenger vehicles. So an ordinary passenger vehicle and there are a bunch of other limitations here passenger vehicles normally have a 30% rate of depreciation and the other one that sometimes people are curious about here would be buildings and buildings normally have a 4% rate of depreciation and these two rates I'm sure you're starting to appreciate this these are sort of grounded in reality we know this that passenger vehicles depreciate at a fast pace you drive a vehicle off the lot and that second it's lost a bunch of its value which is why passenger vehicles have a much higher CCA, a much higher capital cost allowance than buildings do. Buildings take a long time to depreciate. It's a much more sort of um, robust structure, hopefully, you're building as compared to your car, and a building would depreciate then at a lower rate. And that's uh, somewhat commonsensical, and we can see that common sense applied here. So now, and it's hard to use the words common sense with respect to income tax, but that's what happens here. So what happens, oh, let me fix that, is there's another rule that applies here. And the other thing that we should be aware of is we have what's called the first year rule. 
This doesn't apply in all cases, but with most capital equipment or capital property, the first year rule says in the first year that you acquire something, it only depreciates at half its rate. So that's a 50% only in the first year after that you'd have the full depreciation. So with this piece of equipment, we take 100,000 times 8%, that would be $8,000 times 50%. The first year you would have a $4,000 deduction available or $4,000 of CCA. And then in the second year, so now let's assume we're out in the second year here, and in the second year you would again apply that 8% depreciation. So if we took $4,000 off in the first year, we would take now $100,000 minus $4,000, and the new basis for our depreciation is $96,000. That $96,000 is the depreciated value in tax terms. That's what we now refer to as the undepreciated, sorry, I got too many letters together there, undepreciated capital cost, or UCC. So we build all these three letter acronyms here. We got CCA and now we've got UCC. And we would take the $96,000 again times that 8% rate of depreciation and you would get seventy six hundred and eighty dollars and that would be your CCA in the second year the fifty percent rule didn't apply that time because we're now in the second year and we can see that the UCC now is the ninety six thousand dollars that we had in the previous year minus the seventy six eighty that we have in this year and now for next year's calculation, you would use $88,320 as your new UCC. That would be the UCC at the beginning of year three. So I hope that that helps to understand the basic principle of what capital cost allowance is. In the next video, we're going to look at what happens when we dispose of assets where we've had some depreciation happen. So thank you very much and enjoy your continued studies.